What is up, you YouTube? This is Shatner's Prodigy coming at you with another episode of Fabled Quasar vs. The World. This is, of course, the weekly series where I go into Dueling Network's Rated section and I record the first five duels that I come across. So, anyways, here I'm facing off my first duel against Fushan Richie. And I get to start, I go first, and I start off by making a Quasar, surprisingly. So here, I'm just going through the moves, going through the motions. And yeah, there's Ayers Rock Sunrise. Really good card, really solid card. But yeah, throughout this duel, you're going to see that I lose a lot. I mean, it happens. I mean, that's just what you do sometimes. You lose. But here, I'm entrusting my fate into the draws, and I draw extremely well. But yeah. So I'm going to take this time to talk a little bit about why I've been uploading a lot and why it's going to change in the very near future. So last week was, of course, the week of Christmas, so I gave myself that week off because I was doing a lot of traveling up and back from Maryland to Pennsylvania, which is a good two and a half hour drive almost every day, and I didn't have the chance to record as I would have liked. But I also didn't upload a banlist prediction video, which I feel like might have been almost expected of me because the banlist didn't hit Fabled Quasar, like, at all, which is unusual because every single... Ban list, since ban list, no, not ban list, well, I guess ban list, since Fabled Quasar were introduced to the TCG, has indeed hit Fabled Quasar. I made a post about that on the Yu-Gi-Oh! subreddit, I'll link that down below. So, there you see, I made a slight misplay, doesn't really matter in the end, whatever. I should have sent Quasar to the graveyard instead of banishing him, because he was destroyed by, said, Teller Nova Alpha, instead of destroyed by a dimensional prison, but it doesn't matter where he ends up, I mean... If he would have been sent to the graveyard, I would just banish him for Black Dragon anyways. And here you see me trying to just make a play. There's not much I can do. Uh, back there, I should have probably summoned out Fabled Raven and tried to beat over his All Sam to uh, either bait out the... Either bait out the... Sateller Nova Alpha, or just beat over it so he couldn't use the Sateller Nova Alpha, but to be honest, I wasn't reading it. I mean, from the way he just summoned All Sam, which almost no competitive Sateller Knight players play, I kind of assumed he was just playing Burn, which it looks like he is, but Sateller Knight Burn, which I mean, it's a solid tech in Burn. I don't blame him, it's a solid engine. If you just use that instead of the Neb, it's actually probably pretty okay. You could probably do a good four to 5,000 damage on that one monster alone, but whatever. Anyways, so here I run a bit of an altercation. Uh, he doesn't know what corn is. I mean, I assume he knows his black ship of corn, but he's just being a bit of a jerk about it, but whatever. It happens. It happens. So, whatever. Moving on. I lose this duel. Not a big surprise. Uh, the reason I lose this is because... Really just inherent weakness in Quasar... In the fact that it can only negate once per turn. But it is during either player's turn, which is good. I'm not going to smack it. <coughs> Anyways, the card he sat down is Ceasefire, so I'm going to lose this duel because of it. So here, I'm trying to make Palladius just to get that guy off the field. But it turns out I can't. So I back out, I scoop, and we're moving on to duel 2. It happens. Playing off against Hunter Victor Henre as I assume he's called, because if his name was Henry, it would have a Y. And yeah, I get to start. And you can see, I don't do badly in these duels. I mean, the main reason I lose is by some inherent flaw in the deck. And that inherent flaw is power creep. <clears throat> Quasar is just not the be-all, end-all that it used to be. Back in, a uh, whenever Junk Synchron and, like, the triple Quasar decks were big, there was nothing you could do versus that. I mean, there was no out to Quasar. I mean, yeah, sure. If you managed to have Solemn Judgment down, you could take him out. But other than that, there wasn't much you could do. But today, with the destruction just being off the wall, and Super Poly still being at one for the current format, I mean, there's just nothing you can do. But yeah, anyways, what am I doing complaining? So yeah, until they ban Quasar, I'll play Fable Quasar. Whatever, it happens. 
So anyways, I'm playing off against some Dark World deck, which as you know, my track, record, my track record with Dark World is pretty abysmal to say the best. To say the best about it, sorry. I don't know. But yeah, it happens. I mean, you lose some, you win some. That's all I'm going to say about that. So yeah, moving on from this duel to the next duel. I don't think it's any spoiler that I lose. Going into duel 3 versus I Sam IND. This guy's playing some Psychic deck, which, I mean, good for him. I personally don't see the value in Psychics. And I don't decide to make a further play, which I could have done, I guess, technically, maybe. No, I, I don't see any play I could have done. But yeah, drawing the Double Summon definitely helped. <laughs> I mean, if you can call that helping. I had the slight notion that I was going to use, that I was going to, uh, yeah. Sorry, the reason I played double summon is because I thought I was going to normal summon Grimrow, then go for two level fives, but in the end I see this play, which I think is better. I mean, maybe it wasn't, I don't have any way of knowing, but I think I actually still have a normal summon, so I don't know why I went for that play. But yeah, <clears throat> there is a reminder that that loses 200 attack, which doesn't end up mattering because I rip the soul charge, do 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 do, which is good, I like it. I love when I rip Soul Charge. It's, so, it's such a good feeling, you know? Just end up feeling so good. Mm. But anyways, yeah. So, as of now, he doesn't really have any plays. I mean, he's left with one monster versus a Quasar, which, you know, would be great a couple formats ago, but what else? So yeah, set two. And, oh yeah, almost forgot to mention, Dev Pro Fable Quasar vs. Dev Pro Part 4 will be going up and it will have that double Quasar slash 3 attack Quasar montage I was talking about. Uh, Dev Pro released an update. I was finally able to. Sorry. I was finally able to get my replays back, which is great. 10 out of 10. But yeah, if you don't know what that card he has up does, I'm just going to go over it really quickly because it's a really solid card. Anyways, so. Its effect is, it's called Brain Research Lab, by the way. Once per turn, you can normal summon one psychic monster in addition to your no normal summon or set, which is great off the start. It's a double summon for free every turn. And yeah, I lose Quasar there, but whatevs. Um, anyways, moving on. Uh, if you would pay life points to activate a psychic monster's effect, you can add one psychic counter to this card instead, which is really solid because, I mean, you don't need to ever pay life points. For a psychic monster, but if it is destroyed or removed from the field, you lose 1,000 life points for each psychic counter, which is great because he would be paying 2,000 life points for that psychic overmind's effect. I want to say it's psychic overmind, but now he's just paying 1,000 basically. And I don't run MST anymore because MST is inconsistent, but it does help stop you know stuff like Bandit's emptiness and whatever. But what well, we're not talking about that. What we are talking about is. How, <laughs> right now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to make Polites, in case you're wondering, because Polites will bounce that back and do damage. But currently, I don't have a way of doing that, because I miscalculate a lot. I thought that I had two cards in hand. I didn't, I only had one. So I can only go for a level four. I decided to go for a beatdown mode here. Uh, if I was playing freaking uh, Michael the Arclight Sworn, I would have made him, but as you know, I'm not playing him. If you don't know what that guy does, he is like the interdimensional matter transporter. He banishes one card until the next standby phase. Which I guess if you banished Esper Girl is really good, but whatevs. I mean, what can I say? It's like because they banish stuff, whatever. <clears throat> Psychics have always been a really interesting deck. I've always liked them. I always wanted to play them, actually. I just could never find a list that worked for me. I mean, I tried the Trap Tricks slash Grand Soil build, I didn't like it, it was really inconsistent, didn't give me enough synchro plays. I tried, I mean, this build without the Brain Research Lab and it didn't work, but I ended up losing because, I mean, he would have had 10,000 plus life points and I would have been stuck with just like, basically a spittle at the bottom of an ashtray. But yeah, I'm able to draw into... Nizuchi, Grimro, and Fodder, which is great because you can just spam your field to no end. And yeah, so I'm just gonna go off really with all the special summons in the universe. And there I ripped the one for one, so 
I play a uh, decent crawl without thinking, because none of those guys actually have materials I can use in the graveyard. Whoops. But yeah. I don't use decent crawl on Photon Pulse Dragon because it wouldn't serve any, th any point. Because if you don't know Photon Pulse Dragon's effect, once you special summon him and declare a level to change his level to, you can't special summon for the rest of the turn unless you're summoning out Quasar or using him as a synchro material monster. Which really, let's be honest, it's Quasar. So as you know, I guys usually, uh, as you guys know, I usually never negate the first thing they do on their turn because that usually means they're baiting out the effect. But in this case, I figure he's playing some freaking Herald Spirit deck, so I mean, I can stop him from getting one negation, which is good. <laughs> and here I'm just trying to basically show about, but I win this one, so it's good. And moving on to our fifth and final duel versus Man M Mandener. I don't know. I don't know what these people's names are all about. I mean, whatever. It's basically, their, it's their game. They can do what they want. I don't agree with it. doesn't matter. So anyways, here I'm trying to make plays. Plays for days. <clears throat> so yeah, this guy is a little bit clueless. A little bit of a bimbo, but whatever. You face those types of people. You face those types of people. It happens. So yeah. Uh, after review, reviewing this Dole series a little here, this little Dole series here, I feel like I maybe should be running, what do you call it? I maybe should be running White Dragon, because it does open up plays, and it does really seem to add utility. I I'll test it. Next Fabled Quasar vs. The World, you'll see it. But yeah, Friday I'll try and put up a video, just to give you a little bit of an update, maybe like a Get to Know Me video. If you guys want it, I mean, leave some feedback. That's the only way I have of knowing what you guys want. But yeah, anyways, I'm going to leave you here with this, and I hope you guys enjoy the new end card. <laughs> it's the best that movie, that uh, Microsoft Paint can offer. Anyways, Shatter's Prodigy out. And you can always hit me up on Reddit or on Dueling Network if I'm on. Peace. Don't you cry no more.